How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. This is a fusion tip number seven. And this is, it came from another YouTuber actually, who's having difficulty creating a countersink hole that has a countersink at a specific angle. So I'm going to demonstrate this uh, really fast here. Uh, I'm gonna make a, we'll make a quick sketch of something, just rectangular or he, he has a rectangular piece. We'll make it rectangular. We'll, we'll extrude that out. So, so there's several ways you can do this. Sketch, and we can select that surface there. And we can make a, a circle. And we'll make a circle, say it's a 0.375. We'll make three eighths hole. Okay, we could do the hole command H and I could then place a hole somewhere on here. And we go through here, we just would want a simple hole, but they have a countersink method here. And we'll set the diameter at 0.375. And I'm gonna say, and then I'm gonna move it a little closer down here. Let's, let's put it right there. And I'm just, uh, okay, we're gonna come back to that. And another way you could do this is we'll put a point. Point, there we go. And just, just select the spot. And now I'm gonna say stop sketch. Now, so I have basically three methods here for creating a hole. So our circle, we could then just do an extrude or, or press pull, we'll do extrude. And you select your circle, and we could say to uh, through hole, right? And we would say to object on the other side. Cut, and it would say okay. Now we have a hole for that one. We've already created a hole for the other one. Uh, that should be a countersink hole, but we're, we need to define it better. Now if you turn your sketch back on, or sketch, uh, sketch two, I should say. Sketch two, you see our point. We can use that point as a, a basis for a hole. See, now I could always say hole, and I can select this point as our basis. That's a nice way to place holes quickly somewhere and not actually draw a circle or draw the hole at, that sa at the same time in your sketch. And now, so now we have our hole. We can make that, we'll make that 375 also. And say, okay. So those are just two of the same command, but two ways to create it. We'll do the first hole here first. So you'll go to chamfer under modify, select the edge you want to chamfer. Now you have several options here. You have equal distance, two distances, and distance and angle. Now to make a specific angle, click, select distance and angle, and default's gonna be 45. Now there's there's 100 degree chamfers, there's uh, 80, 82 degree chamfers, there's 92 or 90 degree chamfers. So an 82 degree chamfer is 41 degrees, right? You could say, okay, at a distance of whatever you want, um, it's all going to depend on what you're dealing with, what kind of screw. That's not very much. Uh, let's say two. That looks a little better. And you say, okay. Now, you can get your dimensions exactly off of your screw, or you can get your dimensions exactly off your screw, or you can look it up on what the screw you're using. There's your, there's your chamfer. Now we'll go back to the hole. So the first hole we did, we'll just select it down off the toolbar, say edit feature. And you could do the same thing. You'll see on your specifications, choose. So our hole, let's say our hole size here is 375. Okay, down here at the bottom. And then you can choose your angle. Let's say 41 degrees. And then you can choose the diameter of the countersink. So if you measured your screw, you could, you could measure one and see what it was. And if, let's, let's say it was 0.5. You could actually put in that specification. And then of course, the depth of your hole and the tip angle of your drill point if you were having one. Say okay. Now that one did not come out to be like this one. Now this one, this other hole, it's the same thing. It's just we created the hole the same, the the same way. Forty-one. Let's say this is a 
whoops, I keep doing that. Three, seven, five. Say okay. Now those two are going to be the same. I use the same specifications. Do an inspect, do a measure. What, how big is this one is? Uh, See, the diameter is 775. So let's go back here to the hole, edit feature, and our diameter is actually 0.775. Let's put that in and say, okay. It still doesn't look right, though, right? Because I, what's going on here is the, the way they are referencing the angle, whether you reference it off of this surface or are you referencing off the face of the hole. You know, where are we referencing that? On this feature here, this is the right, this is one's right. Edit feature and because if you look really close here, it's showing you the total angle. So here you need to put in 82. Say okay. Now you should have the same hole. They should look pretty much the same. So those are the two, uh, two methods on uh, how to do this feature. Let's see here. The wrong one, the chamfer here, edit feature. And we had 41 because the way they measure that, if you, they show you a picture of how they're measuring it here, the, between the two, the referencing of course the top surface, but referencing the face of the hole. And, uh, that, and it's only one-sided, but so if I put in 82 here, I probably can't put in 82 because of the, the distance is uh, too small. Okay, so basically there's the two methods. Uh, this, this method gives you the half angle. This, this gives you the included angle uh, when you create the whole method. And you'll need to know a depth also with this method. So I hope that helps, Dan. And... Uh, for anybody else out there, I, I hope I explained that uh, just clear as mud, right? So half angle on these, on drawing a circle and, and extract, extruding it and using chamfer command and full angle on using the hole command. And the three methods here that you can actually place a hole. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for watching. Please comment, subscribe, check out all the other tips I have uh, going. I'm trying to do as many as I can, just short, quick, short ones for you out there. Thanks a lot. Bye.